Hey guys, this is Jamie Mayfield, and that is Lee. She's my Florida friend, and she comes up at Christmas time, and we are going to show you the true knit and making. This is going to be her first heel, okay? So I'm going to talk her through it, but I have to video. So let's go ahead and disengage this heel spring, Lee, and you get to do a few rows. All right, now I'm going to hold the camera. Don't worry, I'm not pointing it on you. I'm just pointing it on the machine. Okay, now, you can see that when we took the heel spring off, come on, you can crank. When we took the heel spring off, that changed the size of the stitch. Okay, and we're just using waist yarn, and we're just using a loose tension. This is never, ever going to be a sock. Okay, so you're going to stop at C. Right there. And now you're gonna engage the heel spring. Now, most of these machines have a very similar, yes. And we went over, I showed her how to do the heel and how to engage the heel spring. But what I want you to see is see that the wire is pushing that piece, the yarn up against this little box right here. That means the heel spring is engaged, okay? So crank a few rows. And see what that does to the ease of cranking. This is also the first time Lee has cranked the true knit. It makes it um, a little tighter. So. It's a little tighter, yes. Okay, so now you're going to stop with your yarn carrier at C. Exactly. Now you're going to take your pick and raise the needles behind the red half marks. When you say behind, do you mean this way yes. or th this way? This way. Okay. This is the front of the machine. This is the back of the machine. Okay. So that is behind. Okay, and you're gonna, on your first heel, you're gonna use half of the needles. Now, if you watch any other videos or more than one video, you're gonna hear about a deep heel, and that's where you use more than half of the needles. But when you are just starting out on your very first heel, let's just use half of the needles. So why would you ever want a deep heel? It gives you more room for your instep. Okay. Okay. And so it just makes a sock a little more comfortable or fit a little better, actually. Okay. Okay. So now you're going to crank forward and complete that row. Very nice. Now, however... See that needle right there? That's not standing up like the rest of the needles. See this needle right here? Mm -hmm. That row is not completed until this trailing cam knits that needle. Okay. So crank forward a little further. Oh, okay. Ta-da! Yay! Now, you're going to take needles out. Decrease is first. And okay. that means you're going to take one needle out at a time. Not out, up. Raise it up. We're okay. going to take it out of work. I didn't, out of work. Okay. I get excited in my words, you okay. know. Take it out of work, not out of the machine. Okay. So now crank back around. Now, slow down, girl. Because when you hit that going really fast, if that yarn should miss that first needle, so now zip across. But remember we talked about watching that first needle. Watching that first needle knit. Okay. Okay, so get your pick and raise that first needle. Now, when you come around, hit that needle slow. Make sure it's going to knit. Now take off. All right, now raise the second needle. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See how those stitches are riding up? Yes. Okay, first of all, raise the needle that you need to raise. Okay. okay. Now... The next, sti the stitch next to it, this one right here, mm -hmm. is down far enough that it will knit. So you can get another row without having to install your heel forks. Okay. How do you know that? Because of experience. Okay. But a hit or slow. Now, zip across. Okay. You see those over there? They raised up, too. Hey, you didn't finish that row. There you go. Okay. So now raise your needle. Okay. Now let's see if you can't get one more row. 
How would it act if it if I couldn't get if you couldn't get one more row if that stitch hadn't have dropped down against the cylinder? Okay. Okay. And oh yeah, excellent viewpoint over here. I don't know if you can see it good or not, but this means we need to install the heel forks. Okay. So first of all, the most common piece of advice that's a that's a heel fork right there, baby. Fishing weight, heel fork, and all. The claws go towards that way. Okay. All right. You're going to put the first one in the middle, and you're not going to put it as high as you can get it. Down just a little further. Up just right there. Okay. And she put that in the middle. Now you're going to flank the other two on the other side. Now, any portion of a fork that is underneath... Needles that are out of work is not doing any good. Scoot it over just a little bit. Yep, right there. Whoa. Right there. Yes. Okay, now. Put the other one in. Okay, now let's watch what it happens over here when she puts that in. Oops. Do I need to go over some more? Uh-huh. Because there's no downward pressure right here. Oh, it's opening. It's causing these well, to open. Well, yeah, it's causing them to open. Give it a tug. There you go. There you go. So now raise this needle right here. Okay. And crank the row. Very nice. Okay. Raise your needle. Crank the row. Now the trick to this whole whole heel business, say that three times fast, this whole heel business is to figure out where to put the heel forks. So when you install the heel forks, you have to make sure that those corner stitches, and she just lifted a corner stitch, you have to make sure that those corner stitches are seated against the cylinder. Now, that one was not, but the next one is. So that means you can get another row. Watch her go. Now, crank it across. Okay, so you've got the one you're going to raise, is, but the next one to it is seated. So, well, it's almost seated. It'll knit. No, it is seated. I was looking at the wrong needle in the camera. Yeah, that one is seated. All right. Okay, I see how two of them are raised at this time. So raise your needle. Raise the needle you need to raise. Now let's move your heel forks. Now see how that heel fork is totally under raised needles now. And it's going to happen like that because you're, you're closening, not widening, you're closening the numbers of needles in work. Listen to that again. You can rewind. Okay. So raise that middle one. Yep. Oh yeah, that'll be good right there. Okay. Up over toward closer to the middle one. Yep. And it's getting closer and closer. Nope, closer. Right there. Yep. Right there. Oh, that was perfect. Now you're gonna put the the next one in at the same level on that side. All right. Now then, you've already raised your needle, so you can crank the row. Oh, you gotta hit her slow. Be mindful, your eyeballs are like, mm, they're fine. Raise your needle, and we're gonna raise till we get to the needle by the green. There you go. up a little. Okay, but the next one is seated. Okay, so this is the last one you're going to raise on this side. 
So raise this needle, and it's just how I have the cylinder marked. Okay, and crank the row. Now, on the other side, remember that it's a mirror image. Keep going, it's not complete. There you go. Raise that needle up. That was probably an interjection at the end of the sentence like you're not supposed to do. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to prepare for the decrease. No, the increase. We just finished the decrease. Hang on. So do I... That's going to be part two of the video. 